Good morning, everybody. First of all, I want to congratulate everybody for being here. Yeah, I already saw a few hands. Uh, the first work camp for who is the first work camp? You're in for a treat. I've been to my first work camp in 2019, and I made my first website with WordPress in 2011. And I was like, what? Is there a whole community behind WordPress? I had no idea. I had an amazing time. I'll talk about it a little bit more later in the speech. But I want to challenge you if you're here for the first time or for your fifth time, go all in. Learn things, get inspired, but also be bold in reaching out to people. If you see someone you want to talk to them or her, just go for it. Get everything out of these two days and you'll not regret it. So I want to start with a quote. You will always be the same person in five years as you are today, except for the people you meet and the books you read. So if you want to learn new things, you can read books, but also if you want to develop as a person, it's really important to meet people that can inspire you. So this is the place. We all have WordPress, I guess. And if you want to be inspired, get more out of this community, learn, get to know a few more people. So, who am I? My name is Ferdi, Ferdi Korpersuk. I'm from Netherlands, so I say Ferdi, Ferdi Korpersuk. In English, it's hard to pronounce my back surname, so. I live at 30, I'm 37 years, married to Anna. I have two kids, I'm also really good at Photoshop. I want to showcase my skills over here. My wife prefers that I do not show the children because they're so beautiful and people get jealous and stuff, so I prefer <laughs> not to do that. I'm not joking. No, just kidding, I was joking. I'm a WordPress tutor on YouTube. So what I do, I, I learn new things about WordPress, how to make a website, about any kind of subject, how to make a course website, a web shop. I record my computer screen. I put it on the internet and people somehow seem to like it. I have around 330,000 subscribers. I do it in English and I love it. I have my office upstairs. My kids are downstairs or go to school and I can uh, have lunch downstairs. I love it. I, I, I do everything by myself. And um, that's about me. So we're going to have two or three parts. If you take a look at the overview, I can take some time to take the first sip. So first I'm going to talk about my journey. From when I made my first website to where I am right now. Why? I want to show you there is so much more than just making a website with WordPress. There's so much more. That's what I'm going to show you through my journey. And the second thing I want to talk about is 12 ways to generate revenue with the WordPress, in the world of WordPress. But it's not all about making money. It's also about fulfillment, helping other people. So I could also say 12 ways to help other people in the WordPress community. So I want to start with my, own, my first with my journey. And I want to highlight a few people that, that were really important for me. And the first one is my brother. In 1999, I went to school, middle school, it was here. My house was over here, and my father had an office that was in between. My brother was working for my father, so almost every day out of school, I went to, my, uh, to the office just to hang out with my brother. And then in 1999, I think in 1998, my brother introduced me to the internet. And in 1999, he said, Ferdy, you can also make websites yourself. So he talked about Front Page Express. Anybody has any experience with Front Page Express? I, I loved it. I could create an index.htm, then have three iframes, uh, a menu, a top area, and the page. And then I could navigate. I could make my first website. So I made my first website about the Dutch soccer team. I had no idea what uh, graphic design was. So I used a dark back, blue background, and orange text. I still like the blue background, but I changed it to, to white. And my first website was at threepod.lycos.com. Anybody, does it ring a bell for anyone? Threepod.lycos. And in exchange for an advertisement, I could have my own website online. And I was hooked, I loved it. So the years went by, I started working with Dreamweaver. I started making websites in Photoshop and then sliced them into HTML, in HTML structure or a table structure in HTML. And I went to the Graphic Lyceum in Rotterdam in 2005. And then there was a second important person in my life who helped me to take the next step. It was also a, name, a guy named Peter. Not everybody's gonna be called Peter, but the CEO Peter uh, of a middle school. Uh, he asked me, do you want to be an intern for the school? 
for, on one condition. You need to learn and figure out in two months how to create or how to work with a CMS. I knew what it was. And I, I, I was like, wow, two months, I can do anything I want in order to learn that. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll take it. So uh, for the next two months, four days per week, eight hours per day, I was able to surf the internet and learn how to create a CMS. Um, I hope I don't get in trouble, but the, the CMS I chose was uh, Joomla. <laughs> I hope nobody's escorting me from the stage. It was Joomla. And to be honest, I liked it. It was my first CMS, I was like, wow! Now everything is automatic. When I create a new blog post, it's on top. I don't have to do anything, any, everything in the HTML anymore. So I liked it, and I created a website for the, for the school. I learned more about HTML, CSS, a little bit of PHP. And I was like, thank you, Peter, for giving me this amazing opportunity. So I was hooked to CMSs, and I created a few websites with it. And then I met another person, his name was Matt in Dutch, Matthias. And he kept on telling to me, Ferdy, you need to use WordPress. It's so much better, it's so much easier. And I was like, okay, I will give it a try. And I tried it, and I think I saw something like this. And I was, I was used to Joomla, so I was like, I don't understand it. So I was like, okay, okay I want to do, this, do not do this. I will stick with uh, Joomla. And then in 2011, I'm building up uh, the tension. It's probably gonna be really cool what I'm about to say. So maybe I should take another sip. Maybe a build-up music, no, okay. 2011, I decided to play soccer outside by myself. And I saw a few guys playing soccer. I said, hey guys, can I join? And they said, uh, no. They probably saw how good I was, so they said no. I was like, okay, that's weird, okay. I go back inside. I go to a torrent website. This is not being live streamed, isn't it? I went to a torrent website and I saw an advertisement for making money online with uh, affiliate marketing. I was like, okay, let's do it. It was 40 euros, I bought it. And that's when I learned to make a affiliate marketing website with WordPress and create blog posts and then put your affiliate links in it. That was it. And I was like, actually, actually WordPress is quite nice. So I started working with WordPress and from that moment I did Joomla and I've been happy ever since. My life has been perfect since that moment, and wow, my life is so beautiful now. No, it, but it was like, wow. For instance, with Joomla, you have to have a lot of external extensions, and they're not always working with your current version of Joomla. With WordPress, it was internal. You have the, the, the it's a hard word, the repository, something like that. The overview with all the plugins. It was so much easier, so much easier. And from that moment, I started making websites with WordPress, and then, uh, a year later, I went through a rough time. I, I guess we all go through rough times. And I met Jan Willem. Jan Willem was a, a friend of a friend. And I was struggling uh, financially. I had a broken heart. I was uh, maybe a little bit depressed, I'm not sure. But I, I felt really bad. And I went to a conference and Jan Willem saw me. And he said, Ferdy, I want to talk with you. I want to meet you. So he, he invited me to his office. He has a beautiful office in, in Rotterdam. He has a, a beautiful company named So Media. And also when I went to the internet and I searched for things, his, his website popped up as number one. Oftentimes I was like, whoa, this guy knows what he's doing. And he, uh, we met and he started talking. Hey, Ferdy, uh, I have made a website, a side hustle, theme thumbs. And when I, um, I, I have a lot of things on it, like 1,795 7, themes. And when people buy those themes through my website, I get a commission as an affiliate marketer. And he told me what he made uh, per month as a side hustle. I was like, what? You can combine WordPress with affiliate marketing and then make money even where I sleep? I was, I was like, whoa, if I could make the same amount of money he made in that month, oh, that would be amazing. So what I love about this, is that there was nothing in it for Jan Willem. He just saw me, I don't know what he saw, but he said, hey, let's reach out, and he just shared something. And in the preparation, when I was preparing, I, I, I sent him a message like, hey, thank you, man, for what you've done for me in 2012, because this was, for me, a huge part in, in, in my life, because thanks to him, I learned how to combine uh, WordPress with affiliate marketing, and now I'm doing that for a living. 
And I hope that we also look out for each other because maybe you're here at this conference and you will have a moment like this for you. And then in 10 years you can say, whoa, if you take a look at the video from Rankus, uh, what he's done for all the people, and that's just a small fraction of all the people he met. It's, it's, that's the, the title, by the way, of this, uh, this talk, uh, the, the power of the WordPress community. Thanks to the people that knew about things about WordPress, they were helping me, and man, that, that is, I'm so thankful to be a part of this community. So Jan Willem, Jan Willem helped me, and three years later, I put it finally into practice, and I started making YouTube videos where I promoted uh, premium themes, and then I created a whole tutorial, three hours long, four hours long, and I put it on the internet in English. English is not my main language, but I just was like, I want to have a bigger audience. So I just did it. <coughs> By the way, I, I was so, I had so much uh, momentum, like, I want to do it. I was getting married that year, and we're not, we're not making a lot of money. So I was like, okay, maybe I can give this a shot. And then I recorded it, four hour long, how to make a tutorial from scratch with the, the MFOL theme. And it, since my computer was not that good, and I recorded four hours straight, I exported it, it took 24 hours, and then I found out after a day that the audio failed. But I had so much momentum that the next day, I started at 12 uh, a.m., I ended at 4 a.m., and I think at 7 I needed to be at my work in Zeewolde, and I lived in, uh, near Rotterdam. I don't know how I did it, I was not married yet, so I think I could do a little bit more. But the audio failed again. But this time I had back backup audio, so I used that audio. And that's uh, June the 3rd, 2015, I made my first video on YouTube. And then after a month, I had 20 views per day. I was like, okay. And then two months later, I had 200 views per day. And then I had my first sale, $20. I was like, whoa, $20 from a video I created a few months ago. A few days later, $20. A few, months la a few days later, two times $20, $40 passive income. In, and I have a course, you can buy it. No, just kidding, I have no course. I'm not selling anything. But it was like, uh, it's working. And it was still before I got married. So on our honeymoon, I got my first payment, and we could use the money on our honeymoon, which was amazing. So I made tutorials uh, for, for, with uh, premium things, because the premium things had nice page builders. But you know the, the free WordPress editor from a few years ago, it was really hard to make a website with that, a landing page or a home page. It, well, it, actually, it was kind of a Word document editor. So I got a few people, uh, emails from people because they saw, hey, Ferdy has a YouTube channel. Maybe we can, um, we can promote our stuff. And a lot of that stuff was just garbage. So all the emails, I did not take them that serious anymore. And then I got an email from Ben. Ben from Elementor was the title. And I was like, Elementor, OK, what's that? Um, never mind, I, I will not do it. So I created a tutorial with a free theme for the first time. And I used Site Origin, the Site Origin page. But are there people here that are working for the company Site Origin? Okay, then I don't say what I'm gonna say. No, okay, for me, it did not work. Um, and thanks to that, I was like, okay, let's take a look at the email from Ben from Elementor. And if uh, the, the audio technician could play some hallelujah music, it, it, I was like, I opened it, I tried it, and I was like, wow, this is the tool I've been waiting for. Oh man, drag and drop. If I want something, I just create a section, I can decide the amount of columns I want to have, I can drag different elements in it. This was for me like, oh, I should have had this years earlier because I have so many hard times when a client wanted something. I was playing around with CSS and it did not work. And then finally I made it work. And then he said, you know what? I don't need it. And it was like so frustrating sometimes. And with Elementor, if I want to have social icons and I want to uh, increase the space in between, just a matter of pushing a button, I was like, wow, this is so amazing. So I started to implement um, my, my uh, element, the Elementor page builder in all the tutorials I made. The same Ben did something else while it was amazing. In 2019, he invited me to WordCamp. There was um, a seal, uh, June, June the 3rd, I think, or June the 4th, Elementor was born, so they're now like seven or eight years old. And we had a seal, and the seal went really great. I, I promoted Elementor Pro on a seal, it went really great, 
And Ben said, that's Ben over there, the guy on the phone. I thought he would be interested in me when I would meet him, but perhaps he was not. But he, um, he invited me to go to Berlin, to WordCamp. I said, what is WordCamp? He said, this is where people from WordPress come together. We have an elemental party. We would like to thank you and give you something. Can you come? I was like, okay. So I went. And <clears throat> that is where everything changed again. I met a lot of people. If you take a look over here, that's Sujay from Brainstorm Force. He made the, the Astra theme. There's David Van Cries, uh from the Page Builder Framework. Uh, Svi and Ben from Elementor. I met so many nice people at the, my first WordCamp. And what I got was appreciation. I said, I, I work in the office upstairs. Of course, I get comments. Hey, nice video. Thank you. But the meeting people that appreciate me for what I do, say, hey, thanks to you, Ferdy. I have an agency with my wife. And uh, I can do this for a living now. I'm like, whoa. So I felt a lot of um, uh, thankfulness towards the people that said nice things to me. I felt part of a community, which I had no idea there was. And I got new collaborations. I made new friends. And since that moment, since I, I've been part of the WordPress community, I want to go to as much uh, WordCamps as possible. And I meet new people. I meet new friends, new collaborations. I get inspired. I learn new things. So since that moment, I know, wow, it's, it's so good to be part of a community. Then, <clears throat> excuse me, then, yeah, sorry, wait, if you can all close your ears for a second, I need to, uh, <coughs> that was it. No, not yet, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to take a break. Uh, you can be back in five minutes. Should I start over from the beginning? No, it's okay, okay. <clears throat> yeah, hello, this is my real voice. So we want to, um, no, we went, I went to, um, I wanted to go to WordCamp Asia in 2020, but then COVID hit the earth and all that stuff. And then in 2022, I went to Porto for, for a few hours. I landed in the morning, my flight got canceled for the afternoon, but I could go back in the, in the night. And thanks to that canceled flight, I could have uh, lunch with these people. Uh, Reno, living with Pixels, also a YouTuber. Evan Prizer, also a YouTuber and a plugin maker. And then a few people from Elementor. We had the best food ever. And he, Adam, and a prize of the guy, uh, at the, the, the bold guy, he opened up my eyes to what is possible in the world of WordPress. Until now, I was like, okay, I know how to make websites. I know how to make websites with WordPress. And I know how to teach it to other people. That was my whole view of WordPress and the community. But there's so much more. And he opened my eyes to all the possibilities, and it's not like, okay, and I want to take all the options that are possible, but it was like, wow, it's so great to be part, to be in the WordPress world. What he said, for instance, I make tutorials for companies, and some of those companies are worth maybe 500 million euros or dollars. And I promoted them from the beginning. And he said to me, Ferdy, you're getting commission, and I'm really thankful for the commissions. But he said, maybe your part in the growth of that plugin was 10% or 5%. That would mean that it would be $50 million. Because, and, and don't, uh, it's not like that's the true, but he just said to me, the, the, it's not just you're selling things for people and you're giving them users. You're part of the growth of the value of the company. Be aware of that. So that opened my eyes in such a way that I was like, whoa, what, what we're all doing is so much more valuable than we think. And then I met him uh, last week again in, uh, in the United States. Again, really inspirational. What he did, he went from the, the, the tutorial guy to a plugin guy. So he met some people at WordCamp. Then he said, hey, I have an ID for a plugin. And then the guy he met was making that plugin. And he showed me how great, it, how good it was going. And that's why I want to go to the second part and talk about what is possible. Maybe you're dragged here by a friend because he didn't want to go alone to this event which can imagine that can be like, if you're alone, ooh, I'm alone by the way. Ooh. But um, maybe you never made a website with WordPress before. The great thing, what I want to tell you, is you can learn anything. You can learn how to make a website with WordPress. There are courses, there are videos, there are books about it. You can learn coding. You can learn how to, to start working with JavaScript, PHP. You can learn all that stuff. 
If you can drive a car, you can learn things. If, if you want to learn more about marketing, you can follow books, you can follow courses, you can do a lot of things to learn all these things. You can learn more about communication. So if you're here and you're like, okay, there are gonna be 12 tips on how to make money with WordPress, I don't know WordPress, you can learn anything, as long as you're willing. So I wanna talk about the, the ways on how to make money with WordPress. But as I said, it's not only about making money. There are rich people that are depressed that should tell us something. I think it's about fulfillment, helping other people. When I order a pizza, is there anyone else who sometimes orders a pizza? Sometimes you need to have interaction with the crowd, otherwise they fall asleep. Pizza, okay, so what happens? People, they make the pizza, people deliver the pizza, and I make money. That's the whole way of business. So I, they make money, but they're also helping me. So that's the whole, I think that's the whole marketplace is helping other people in exchange for money. And so, so it's not just making money, it is helping people. And when you help other people, you should feel fulfilled. So are you ready for 12 ways on how to help other people? And a nice quote about helping other people. You can have everything in life you want if you'll just help other people to get what they want. Zig Ziglar. That's what I focus on. I don't focus on how can I make more money with my YouTube channel. No, I focus on hey, uh, what tutorials can I make that will really help other people. And when I do that, when I focus on helping other people, somehow from the left, from the right, I see that I can do anything I want because I focus on helping other people. So the first way, this is, I think nobody ever heard of this. You can make websites for clients. This is new, make notes, stuff, no, of course. But if, you never, if you're totally new here, for me, the first logical way to make money with WordPress is to make websites for clients. I made my first website in 2005 or six for a client, not with WordPress. I charged five euros per hour or six for, for my aunt. The next one was $15 or euros per hour. And when I, when I stopped in 2017, I was on 75 euros per hour. But then I started working with uh, project prices. I can charge now a few thousand dollars or euros to make a website. So there, you can learn more about it. You can get more experience. So that's the first way on how you can make money. And again, it's not like all the 12 things should be something that you should do. But it can be, can be that two or three are making you excited, like, hey, that's something maybe I can do. So that's why I'm just throwing them all out to you. The second one, you can work for an agency. You learn how to make a website, you learn a bit of coding, and then you can work for an agency. I think the, the, you get paid really well, and it's really interesting. You can learn a lot of things when you work for an agency. You see how to get new clients. You see how to interact with the clients. You learn about the appointments, like what does the client deliver? What do you deliver yourself? So that can be a really good place to be when you want to learn or when you want to make money with WordPress. The third one, kind of similar, work for a product-making company. So they are not making websites for clients, but they're developing a plugin for WordPress. And I think a lot of people are here that are working for a product, a, a plugin company. I think also that can be really interesting and a great way to, to make money, but also be part of a team with like-minded people and learn a lot about stuff, a lot, a lot of stuff. The fourth one, teach WordPress to others. I've been to an event in 2016. It was in Van der Valk, um, somewhere, Hardwijk, I don't know somewhere in the center of the Netherlands, and a guy rented a room in the Van der Valk for like 30 people. Let's say he paid $1,000 for that. And um, there was, it was including the food, so he didn't have to think about that. Uh, the course was um, $400, I think. So $400 times 12, and he pays $1,000 to Van der Valk. That's a really nice way to make money. So you can, you can share your uh, knowledge about WordPress with others. Hire a place, make sure that somebody's taking care of the food, and then 12 people or 20, depending on how much you can help one-on-one -on -one when they are uh, doing their own, uh, making their website. And that's a great way to make money. Uh, I think in a short amount of time, you can make a relative a lot of money, even though you have to prepare and stuff. The fifth way, and by the way, um, I'm starting with the skill and time in exchange for money uh, ways. 
but I'm go we're going to go more towards the, the scalable options. Uh, you're only one person, you only have 24 hours per day, and when you, when you exchange that time in exchange for money, it's limited to 24 hours, and I hope you don't work 24 hours per day. But there are also ways with the digital world that we can scale it more. And that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit more. For instance, with a web design agency, uh, this is something that's totally not appealing to me. I think that's a lot of uh, um, responsibility. You, yeah, you need to hire people. Uh, people need to be paid with the money you make from the clients. So the websites need to be really good. But hey, if it's something you have a passion for, maybe you have a good friend or they say, be careful with uh, doing business with friends, or maybe you know someone and they have a lot of knowledge about business, you have a lot of knowledge about making websites, you can create an agency, hire people, even outsource it overseas, and then start a web design agency. And that's more scalable because you can hire people. This one is interesting. You can buy websites at flippa.com, for instance, and optimize them to make more revenue. So there, there's a website, and you can buy a website for $10,000 and it needs to disclaim or it needs to uh, disclose how much they make per month. And then you can take a look at that website if you're really interested. Maybe you see a few ways how you can optimize it. You buy it for $10,000 and the revenue per month is maybe $600. And then you can uh, increase the revenue if you optimize their website. And then you can maybe go to $1,000 per month. And then after 10 months, you made back the money from your investment. And after that, you can make more money with that. And then with that money, you can buy bigger websites. That's, that's I have no experience with this, but I know people that do that. They know how to optimize a website like crazy, and then they can uh, increase their revenue in that way. Create an affiliate marketing website. This is one of my favorites. Helping other people. So for instance, I like cameras. Canon, Nikon, Sony. So what I can do, I can create a, a website about cameras. Which camera should you buy when you want to go on vacation? Which camera do you want to buy when you want to start a YouTube channel? Uh, you can create blog posts uh, reviewing all the cameras. You can create comparison blog posts. You can create top five blog posts. And when you help other people to make the right decision, they click on the link, the affiliate link, because it can be affiliated with Amazon, Coolblue, Bolt.com. Then you can get a cut of the commissions. The only thing is with physical products, the, the commissions are lower. With digital products, the commission are, commissions are often higher, often higher. So that's something you can do. How about this one? Teach online about WordPress. That's what I do. And I was like, I'm not gonna say that because I don't want to create more competitors. I'm happy, I see nobody taking notes. So let's skip this one. No, just kidding. Uh, teach online about WordPress. You can do it through YouTube. You can do it through TikTok. Helping other people to, ach to achieve a certain result with a WordPress tool or a WordPress plugin or with a theme or helping them to make a website. And when people buy on the links you use in the, your tutorials, you can make money. The ninth one, you can create your own plugin and tool. If you have an ID, you can reach out to someone who has a team, uh, share your ID, and then start building the plugin. And that's what the Adam told me, like 30, man, you can help so much people at the same time. And of course, you can also make a lot of money with that. So if you have an ID, for a plugin or a tool, maybe you make websites for clients, and every time you see the same problem, like, oh man, I need to do this and this and this, how would it be if that could be solved? Well, your plugin that you can create could be the solution to that. And if you're the one running into the same problems with WordPress, there are probably more people running into the same problems with that. So you can create a plugin. And the great thing about the plugin is that if, if you want to, you can also sell it later on because you're not Attached, I, I'm attached to my YouTube channel with my face. It's harder for me to sell. I have no plan to sell it, but with a plugin, it's easier to sell if you want to sell it. You can also share your ID. Sign a non-disclosure form. Share your ID in exchange for a share. So I'm a, I have a YouTube channel. I could say, I have an audience, and I have an ID. Can I talk to you? If you can make the plugin, I can get a cut of the, the, the plugin, of the revenue, and in that way I can still focus on my YouTube channel, and they can make the plugin. So if you have an ID for a plugin, you can also outsource it and then become a shareholder. So two more to go. You can sell any product using WordPress. It can be physical products. 
It can be physical products. It can be something you make yourself. You can sell through WordPress and WooCommerce, and then the other one, sharing knowledge. And then you can sell your course. You can, if you have knowledge about any subject, it doesn't have to be WordPress related, you can create a course website, automate everything, so when people pay, they get automatic access to the, to the course. Uh, keep in mind that you need to be, uh, that you should offer support when you have a paid course. This is what a lot of people do. They, uh, they create a course, then they start doing advertisements, try to get a good return on investment. So that can also be a possibility. So let me show you an overview. Make websites for clients. You can work for an agency. You can work for a product making company. You can teach WordPress to others. Start a web design agency. Buy websites and optimize them. You can create an affiliate marketing website. Teach online about WordPress. Create a plugin or tool. You can become a shareholder. Sell any products using WordPress or sell any course using WordPress. So I hope that, some, that something here in between maybe helps you to take the next step, just as Jan Willem helped me to take the next step, and Peter, and other Peter. And um, I want to thank you for your time. I hope you liked it. And if you have any question, this is the time to, to ask me. So if you have any question, uh, feel free to stand up and yell it at me, and then I will give you an answer. And if there's no question, Remkes has a question. We, we set it up front like you should have a question, otherwise I stand here and feel awkward. Yes? Uh, we didn't, but I did have, still have a question. Uh, run, my friend, run! Wait, wait, wait. I can just scream, that's fine. Uh, only easy questions, by the way, so maybe so. Should... My question is uh, the curiosity of why uh, YouTube, for you, is the thing to do. So uh, you list a couple of things um, in terms of, oh, let's go to number 12, sell any course using WordPress. Uh, you could have gone full courses and stuff. Why, why YouTube? Why, why does that make your heart sing? Because you're quite successful at it. Thank you. Oh man, I have, a really, I have a really clear answer for that. I created a course in 2013, the year before I started uh, doing uh, WordPress on YouTube. I think I'm really good at what I do, making high quality videos. I am a video maker, so I could use it in my uh, YouTube channel. I made the best Dutch course, no offense, in 2013 about making a website with WordPress and with WooCommerce, in my opinion, but I had no idea how to sell it. I'm a people pleaser. I like to be liked, so what I did, I sold it for $10 just to get sales, and nobody bought it. I, I don't know how to sell. So I had a course, it took me a long time to make it, but I did not sell it. And then I was like, hey, there are affiliate commissions. Maybe if I can share it all for free, then through the commissions, I can make more money. And that seems to be the case. And that's why, and what I don't like, I, I like to do two things by myself. I said with the, the agency, then I think about all the things that could go wrong. There are also people that love that. They want to grab that and I prefer um, to do it all by myself, so I can also take a day off, or be with my family, or... So that's why I, I feel a lot of affinity with YouTube, because I can also take a break, and I have no responsibilities whatsoever to anyone, so that's what I like. Yes? Uh, you were talking about affiliate marketing, and I've heard a lot of people say that affiliate marketing has been dead for a couple of years. Um, how do you see that? Because there are a lot of extensions for Chrome, uh, for example, that give you the most discount, and in exchange, they of course they call the affiliate commission, so you will end up with nothing. What? I never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm about to cry. Um, uh, I have a rule for that. I learned it from someone else. Be the first one or be the best one. When I followed that course from JP in 2011, he said there are a lot of people that say that the market of affiliate marketing is already saturated. That's 12 years ago, I started in 2015. Um, I think if you're not the first one to create an affiliate marketing website about a certain subject, 
it's a matter of becoming the best one. So there are also YouTubers that start after me that have, um, they maybe look better, their English is better, their, their video editings are better, they can work faster, they don't have children, and they can, they, they're also profitable. So um, I believe that, yes, the market is more saturated than it was, but when you are not the first one, make sure you become the best one. And it's a long run. I do this now for nine years, and now I can live from it. But uh, people sometimes think, my neighbors, oh, Ferdy, just chilling the whole day. And I'm working really hard almost every week, every day on it. Uh, I, I believe in perseverance. And if you keep on doing what you're doing, and the quality is good, I believe in the long run, you can still become successful with it. And with things like uh, an extension like that, I try to focus on myself. There's sometimes people that exactly copy my tutorial. So I did a lot of research and stuff. And then other people come and they make exactly the same thing, even with the same words in bold and in color. And I'm like, oh man. And then I think, okay, you know what? We're doing great. I can now focus all my energy on the negative stuff. I prefer to focus on the, the things that are going great. So I hope that answers your question. We have a few minutes left. So if there's any other question, yes. Thank you for your presentation. What are the three most common mistakes for a beginner to make trying to make instructional videos in general? Uh, my first one was that after my first video, um, I quit. I was like, okay, now I'm gonna wait until I'm rich. Well, then I would still be waiting. So uh, the, the, the danger is that you create something or people create two blog posts and then they say we're not uh, accepted by AdSense and stuff. To quit after your first beautiful product. And what also is a, a really big mistake is never start. And I don't want you to encourage to start a YouTube channel as I said, but I'll just get you, you have to start. If you believe you can do it, I um, wanted to do this in 2012, and there was someone that told me, when I shared my ID, really excited, I'm gonna create YouTube uh, videos. Ferdy, that doesn't fit you, that's not who you are. Guess what, I did not do it. So the mistake is not to do it, not to start. The second one is to quit after your first video. And the third one, um, yeah, it can be that you have a lot of reasons to think why you're not good enough to do it. I have it also, I still have it. Like I see other YouTubers are like, wow, they have it all together. I'm from the Netherlands. It is that I'm super handsome. Otherwise I would have no idea how I could fix it. That was a joke, but nobody left because they all think I'm, thank you, thank you. Wow, get him off the stage. So, so I, I have to, um, not starting and or quitting after the first video and waiting you, you after the first video you definitely should make the second one and the third one, etc. Yes? Shall we wrap it up? <laughs> it's getting weirder and weirder, so... Uh, okay, yes, uh, one more question? Or is it okay like this? Well, thank you for your attention. Um, thank you.